you. This is uh, your brother, Lynn, coming to you once again. Uh, we still in Job, and I'm just so excited and full this day. This is uh, November the 27th. This is the last Saturday in November. You will never get November 27, 2021 again. So we we gonna we gonna start off with prayer because I'm excited. I mean, God has been filling my head with a lot of good facts, facts that I can understand that even scientists have proven. You know, that's facts. And so we are gonna get into because we wanna we we just we just we just gotta talk today. And uh, you know, Job is in the, his friends come back and rebuke him. And uh, let, let, let's see this back and forth. But we, they, both of them are uh, saying uh, truths. You know, uh, you know, they don't have knowledge, but, you know, God's knowledge. They have knowledge, but they, they're religious. And uh, at this point, uh, God already spoke and said that Job was perfect, but he was saying that Job was mature. And a lot of us are mature, but we have no knowledge of who God is. So we 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 gonna first of all let us pray, Heavenly Father. We thank you in that precious name of Jesus. We come to you humble as we know how on this uh, you know Thanksgiving weekend. You know, giving you all thanks and giving you all praise and giving you all honor. Now, Father, you know, uh, use this vessel again, this uh, these lips of clay, and you know, use it for revelation, not for self myself you know talk to me holy spirit give me give me give me your knowledge and, and give me your wisdom and understanding just make make it clear you like you always do like you, you make it clear to me make it clear to those who are listening and we're just gonna go on a word line by line you know precept by precept and we're gonna see what you have to say not what we have to say and not what we think it was what you said and we're going to go through your word because your word is spirit. Jesus said your word is spirit and it's life. So as we go through your word with some of the things that you have been uh, discussing this week, uh, continue to give us clarity of mind, give us revelation. And we thank and we praise you. We lift you up. We magnify your holy name in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Let, let us let us share our screen uh, you know you know let us share our screen and uh, and like always you know we we start off like always with a title and with something that we need to understand and what the Lord has been saying oh, okay put you know put this here. You know, just just a little briefly, because we can expand that, that you won't have enough room on your paper. So we always start off with this is this title is the born again believer. Yeah. <laughs> Job experience. OK, so we, we put in the modern day believer and then Job experience. And we still, you know, even today, we still go through this is the test. You've been tested just like you've been tested. You know, we COVID. You've been tested. You know, we, we've been tested. With diseases, we've been tested. With friendships, we've been tested. With love relationships, we've been tested. With uh, our, our members of the body, we've been tested. So, in the beginning, God. Then we we start that Genesis two. We in the beginning, God. And the earth was without. But I'm not going to. You gonna read that whole thing, and you gonna put in those dot 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 in darkness. That's the first thing he said, in darkness. That's the first time you see darkness, in darkness. And he said, and the spirit of God moved. Okay, I'm reading the Amplified Version. You can read any version you want to see. And God said, like he always do, he always speaks. But when he said it is, he said, let there be light. And there was light. In other words, uh, he said, put this by there, you know, life. This is what light means, life. God. God's spirit. Christ. Love. Favor. Grace. Wisdom. That's all incorporated in this light. 
you look at it as physical life. But let's look at it from the spirit. He said the word I Jesus said the word I speak is spirit. And God called light this life day. And he called darkness. Let's, let's look at darkness for a while. Anti God. The self, sin, the flesh, ignorance, and death. He called it night. Mm. And there was evening. Okay. And there were morning. One day. Ooh. Mm. So that day consists of life, God, God's Spirit, Christ, favor, grace, wisdom. Think about it. Even though you got the evening and morning, when you got midnight, it's all one day. The darkest part of the day is midnight. Midnight, you change over to day. And you heard Paul say that midnight, he was singing. In the <laughs> okay, let's move a little further. We're not going to keep you long today. Because I know you got to go out and shop till you drop. And I don't, I, you keep doing that. He said, love suffer long. My God, my God, love suffers long. Well, you got to read Genesis. If you, I mean, you got to read 1 Corinthians 13. If you want to know what love is in the, in the spiritual sense, that we always say, I love you. Well, I'll leave that alone. And John 16 said, God so loved the world. He gave. Love always has to do with giving. And this is a giving season in the earth. But this is the, for the world, this is the worst, this is the time they commit more suicides than any other time of the year. Mm. So, love suffers long. The book of Job teaches us to understand why righteous, the righteous, God called Job righteous and he called him perfect suffer long teaches to rebuke the slander Satan our, he's our prosecutor he's our slanderer he teaches us to know suffering the experience of the cross of Christ and to know the power of suffering long and to know God's purpose. And we know his purpose. We're going to see his purpose at the end. I know we got a lot of purpose. We say we witness. Yeah, that's his purpose. But we also know true repentance and belief. Holy Ghost came here to convict us of belief. The wrong, yeah, yeah, we don't believe. Believe Christ. See, see, love is uh, self-restraint and patient. And it builds relationships. And love is true spiritual love in Christ. Love is life and is faith. And again, true repentance. It's belief. Now, Jesus said, look, look at what Jesus said. You, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. But he also said, Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. We know what light is. He said, I'm the light of the world. And then he came back and said, this is something I don't understand here in 2021. In the midst of a COVID resurgence, he said, you are the light of the world. That's what he said. He said, those born again believers, he said, you are the light of the world. You apostles, you, you prophets. 
you pastors, and you teachers, you evangelists. Hmm. He said, you are. You, you body of Christ, you're the light of the world. But then he come back and say one thing that we still don't understand today. All these apostles sitting up here in, in 2021 call themselves apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers and evangelists. He said one day when you, he said that time comes, he said you will know. See, right now, they're operating without knowledge. That's why they're sitting up here with masks and all this other stuff. They're operating without knowledge. They say they're okay. They know, they know God. He said, you will know for yourselves that I am in my Father. And you are in me. And I'm in you. When you got knowledge, you're going to understand this. He said, when you got wisdom, you're going to understand this. And then he gave me some facts today again. And I'm going to keep this on here. And I said it again and again. I'm going to say it again and again and again throughout the entire teaching on Job. Light travels. He said, you're the light of the world. He said, it travels. It moves. It's motion. 186,411 miles per second. My God, my God, my God. He said, there's 86,400 seconds in a day. One day. Hmm. This is this is natural stuff. This is something scientists have proven. Now God said, "I'm the light of the world." <laughs> My God! Look at look at those figures. Seconds, eighty six thousand four hundred seconds in a in a day, and it travels at one hundred and eighty six thousand four hundred eleven miles. That's something you can understand. And he said a light year's measurement is distance, not time. As the, the name might suggest. He says distance and not time. He said a light year. He said a light year is a distance. A beam of light travels in a single earth year. Six trillion miles. I'll let you uh, digest that. And we're going to get into all this stuff again and again and again. Because now we're going to go back to the reading of Job. You got to understand. Now Job's friends come on scene. Feel that. And the other one sit down for a while. He's coming back. And he's speaking. He's opening his mouth. So he's trying to prove that they know God. And that, that Job is being uh, punished. Job is doing it, that this experience of yours is, is your fault. Okay, and we say that today. That's why I say this is very relevant today in this COVID resurgence, this COVID in 2020 when COVID came on the scene, even if it's man-made, I don't care, it, everything God allows. He said, because the earth is the Lord before the uh, and everything that dwell there, and he said, they won't come near you. Okay, I'll leave that alone. So this is this is Bill, Bill Dad. He said the answer. Then answered Bill Dad, the, the Shuite. How long will you say these things, Job? No, he said, well, I don't know. Job just got through speaking, got through rebuking his friend. He said, how long shall the words of your mouth be as a mighty wind? Uh-oh, it must have hit a chord. Does God pervert justice? No, he don't pervert justice. Or does the Almighty pervert righteousness? No, he don't. But you don't know what righteousness and justice is, Bill Dad. You don't know what justice and, and righteousness is. Even today, we, we speak, and we don't know what it is. We speak on it. But we don't know what it is. Some of us. Justice is Christ, and righteousness is Christ, and you in them. So, so I answer the question for you, theologian, 
apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, and evangelist. It's Christ. If your children have sinned against him, uh-oh, <laughs> your children sinned against who? Christ. God. Then he has delivered them into the power of their transgression. Mm. Look, look what he said. That's what he's saying. So Job, we know Job's children sin against God. So he, he, he delivered them into the power of their transgression. That's not what God said. If you will seek God diligently, that's what Job is doing. He said, I'm going to seek God and make your supplications to the Almighty. Then if you are pure and upright, uh-oh, if, if, if you be, you remember, if you be a Christian, pure and upright, surely he will bestir himself for you and make you your righteous dwelling prosper again. So, Joe, we're going to make Joe prosperous again. Okay? Job saw it. He did. He just said, yeah, he did. Job seek it. But Job was talking without night, talking out of his head without God's knowledge. And though your beginning, it was small, like all of us, yet your latter will end will be greatly increased. You, know, you already prophesied, Job. <laughs> he gonna get double. But we try to, we try to make this deeper than what it is. And though your beginnings were small, yet your latter end would greatly increase. For inquire, I pray you, of the, of the former age and apply yourself to, the, to that which their fathers have searched out. Jesus came along and said, Seek it, you shall find. For we are what of yesterday and know nothing. You're correct. You know absolutely nothing. You have no knowledge of God because our days upon this earth is, is a shadow. But today we know something. Even though our days is a shadow. Even though we walk through the shadow and valley of death, we fear no evil. We know that now. We know that because we know Christ. We just got through talking about in Christ. Shall not the forefathers teach you and tell you and utter the words of out of their, their heart the deepest part of their nature. Can the, can the rush or pipes grow up without marsh? Can the flag or the reed grass grow without water? See, throwing natural examples, trying to show Job his knowledge. While it is yet green in flower and not cut down, it withers before any other herb when without water. Look at it. He, he's using illustration. So, are the way of all who forget God and the hope of the godless shall perish for his confidence breaks and the object of his trust is a spider web. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Look at this. What a confidence breaks. Hey, first of all, he's talking about God. He says, so, so are the ways of all who forget God. And who forgot God? You saying Job forgot God? And the hope of the godless shall perish? He's calling Job godless. See, that's in Job's mind, that's what you're calling him. So in, in your pain, Job speaking in his pain, you saying that he's godless. You may not mean in your mind that he's godless. You just overall doing some philosophy. Theolo you know, people sit in these congregations think, oh, I must be ungodly. He shall lean upon his house, but it shall not stand. See, Job's house is gone. He shall hold fast to it, but it shall not last. Look at what are you talking about? He is green before the sun, and his shoots go forth over his garden. Godless 
his roots. My God, this this is what people say. You know, we talk about family members are wrapped about the stone heaps and see their way promisingly among the rocks. But if God snatches his him from his property, look 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 at look at his analogy. All of us end up here with problems. He says, God snatches him. He, he assuming God is doing this. In his mind, and his knowledge of God, he thinking God is doing what, doing this to Joe. He's allowing it. That's the test. But he said, but if God snatches him from his property, then having passed into the hands of others, it, his property, will forget and deny him, saying, I've never seen you before, as if shame on him, like his former friends. Look at him. See, this, 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 this guy talking. Here he go again. See, this joy, this is joy of going the way of the ungodly. So what, Job, you're saying Job is going the way of the ungodly. And God has spoke himself that you didn't hear that Job was mature. He was perfect. He said, have you considered him? When you come along talking nonsense and from the dust, others will spring up and take his place. Okay. Behold, as surely as God will never uphold wrongdoers. He will never cast away the blameless man. You are correct when you say he will never cast away a blameless man. He ain't casting away Job. Job is being tested, just like we are being tested. Some of us have failed the test. Especially with the, any of you who closed your church, you failed the test. You failed it. Now God is coming back. He's going to talk to you about it. You fail the test. Okay. He will yet fill your mouth with laughter. Yes, he will. That's one true statement. And your lips with joyful shouting. He is. He is. When you go through your test, he will fill your mouth with laughter. Even in your test, he will fill your mouth with laughter. And your lips with joyful shouting. You will praise them in the congregation in your chest. Those who hate you will clothe, be clothed with shame. Correct. And the tents of the wicked will be no more. And the wicked are those who, even the religious folk, God consider, look, look at the Pharisees. They're wicked. He called them that. Because they didn't believe. That's why I say repentance is in order. My God, so let me, let me close this, and close it, close it so we can have our little conversation again. Let me stop sharing. Father, I thank you and I praise you for your, your, your word today on this Thanksgiving Saturday. I praise you and I honor you. I lift you up, I magnify your holy name because you are God all by yourself. Now, as we do a quick commentary, continue to, to uh, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight because you are my rock and you're my redeemer. You're my salvation. And all those who are listening, open up their ears so they can hear what your old friend just said and do some correction in their own life on how they became our friends of someone who's going through who's having a test. They mature, but they're having a test. Help us to understand our frailties in this flesh. And we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, hey, I told you, Joe, I'm full, boy. I love this stuff. I love it, and it's at a perfect time, especially in the resurgence of this COVID environment. And I'm speaking every week to folk about 
not only Joe will they come to me with a with a with an issue. And I pray, I say, Lord, help me, let me, let me, let me speak to them in their language so that they can understand. Understand this thing called flesh that we don't, man. We, we're, dan we're dancing in our flesh, we'll sing out of our flesh. It ain't got nothing to do with God. We thinking we coming to God. When I was on my knees praying, I, you know, God was all, all around me. Not only he's in me, he was all around me. Like he had his arms around me. And that's when the tears of joy will flow. And that's when he will say, okay, son, come on. You know, this one day, this is a day. that he has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We have to understand that. Job friend, you know, he think he's talking correct. He's talking, he, but he, his insinuation that, that Job is, a, is living, it was living a sinful life. He was faking it. He was living in sin. And this is before the cross. And we do the thing is, we're taking Job and we put in Job when we have our Job experience. We still, when you do things, oh, this is what a person explained. Maybe you can understand this. When a person do things over, doing the same thing over and over and think that things will change. See, that is what we call insanity. They would say, why, why is this happening to me? Because you're doing the same thing over. You, you're walking in darkness and you're saying, why is there no light? I remember when Haggai was crying. The water was right in front of her, but she couldn't see it. She was dying of thirst, saying, me and my son going to die. And God said, hey, Haggai, hey, what's going on? He said, well, you know, he, he said, Here, here's some water. And that's what we're doing. We, we sitting up here and, and the fellowships are dying of thirst. We sitting there, they're going through these religious experiences and think we're doing, we, we doing God's will. God saying, repent. I mean, I see some stuff. I say, what are these people doing? It's simple. He said, you are light to the world. He said, first of all, I'm light. And you like, and then he comes back and says, I'm in the Father, you and me, and I'm in you. But I'm light. And we see in factual planes how light travels each day. In one day, 86,400 seconds in a day. This is light traveling. They travel miles. So if it travel, travels 186,000 miles a second, and you are light. What are you doing? What are you doing? You know what we're doing? We're doing. We're walking in darkness, not in light. Because you're not witnessing. You're not fellowshipping. Not the fellowship is not going in the building and, and, and drinking coffee. You know. And drinking tea or whatever you want to drink, and then you know, say a few worship songs. That ain't that ain't that ain't light. I know we think it is. People and the world going being trash. Nobody being healed. Everybody want boosters and and, and shots and thinking they're gonna die. And God is the is giver of life. And then when somebody die in a congregation, there they there there's 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 more worship when persons are dying. They get it. That, that's that's a whole that's a whole nother subject we're gonna get into. Jesus just kept preaching. They came to him, Lazarus, your, your one you love is dying. He said, "Okay, I'm, I'm, I, I see you. That's for your, that's for your, your stuff. It ain't for me." Okay, he just kept preaching, doing the will of the Father. That's what he did, and we, 
Well, we we get old. My oh, goodness, don't let a don't let a brother, sister, or son, or daughter, or somebody die. You you just been out of shape. You can't do anything. You blame you blame God, like like Job and and these guys. We we blame. We 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 blame us. We good for that. Oh, you do yeah because of your what you doing. Yeah 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 you you doing this. Uh, you, you didn't you, you didn't did that and and uh, yeah your yeah, your sisters and brothers and done that and your sisters and brothers and your cousins and, and it's because you know you you got you you you're living under the curse. You you got to break the curse. You know and we we uh, yeah we we all smart. Okay. We all smart. We are, uh, the apostles are smart, and the, 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 the prophets are smart, and the, 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 the pastors are smart, and the, 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 the teachers, and the evangelists, we, we smart, you know. You know. And the simplicity, the simplicity, simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus was simple. He even told me, he even told me before the cross, go, go heal some of y'all break it down in twos, go to each house and do what you have to do. I, I'm giving you power to do that, to tread on serpents. And, and this is before they even received the Holy Ghost. Okay. G said, I, I just told you to do, just do what I tell you to do. Obedience, obedience better than sacrifice. We all know the word. God is good, I'm telling you. I, uh, but I, I I love watching the show. And, and people ask me, I say, you know, yeah. When I tell them something, they look at me and say, yeah, that man lost his mind. He's sitting up here, he didn't lost a little bit of mind he had. Whether business or whatever, okay, y'all do it. Y'all keep doing it. Y'all keep following. Y'all keep doing the same thing over and over again and, and expect something to be different. When that don't work, they still do it again and again and again. It don't work. And then they say, okay, I, I, you you insane. I say, yeah, I'm crazy. If it's not working, why do it? If it's not working, why do it? Okay? And it, evidently, it ain't working. Because see, as soon as COVID hit you, you, you ran. And that showed you where you are. That's what God was saying. He said, show, he's showing you where we are, are as a body of Christ. And then once we think we had the shot and the boosters, guess what? We we doing the same thing over again. You can't. You, you see them. I seen them dance. I seen them beating the drums. I seen them. They they just having a good time. I'm praising God. I'm worshiping. And I learned a good the word. You know, God gave me a word about worship, and they, they got rolling. I said, My goodness, worship is heart connect. It's following God. We think it's singing. Okay. It's humility. Getting on your knees. He said, look at him. Look at him. He humbled himself. Getting on his knees. And saying, thank you. Lord, help me. Look, look at him. That's what God said. When I get on my knees, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. It's just that simple. Because you ain't doing anything. It's God working through you. The spirit of God working through you. He's trying to get you to believe that simple thing called belief. And I'm getting ready to close. I'm finished with my commentary. Today. Now you saw how Job, we saw what light, we saw in the beginning God. And he said, let there be, and it was. And he said it was good. When you read those first five verses in Genesis 1, it was. Whatever God said, and you read the whole general, whatever he said it was. And he said it was good. And then he said, let us make man in our image, our likeness. And he, hey, he did it. Okay. It, it, this, ain't, this ain't hard. This is not brain surgery. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to let you enjoy the rest of your uh, shop till you drop weekend. I'm gonna let y'all because y'all gonna have church again tomorrow, and uh, it's gonna y'all gonna be in those we gonna be in those buildings, and we are gonna be praising and worshiping. That's what they call. It. And then we gonna we gonna hear a few words, and then we are gonna be dismissed, and then we are gonna go back, many of us, to our old, our ways, and and say a few words, and 
and say thank you and get be religious. Unless we'll start all over again next week because then Christmas is coming up. Then we go shopping, get money, and spend till we broke, and then we and that's life. That's your life. In the earth. Now, I ain't talking to them. I'm talking to born again folks. So I hope I, I hope you have a, a let, let you know a great rest of your weekend. Let God's face shine upon you this weekend, so that you will get revelation of who He is, because these are important lessons of suffering and witnessing how to. Okay, it's not complaining; it's how to. People are hurting out here. And hopefully we can, at least one by one, like he broke them up two by twos, and he said, go to one each. Go to one person who's hurting and help them. Not with your, uh, not with your, 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 your religion, but help them at their need. Help them understand who God is. Put God in their life. You know, use the name of Christ and tell him what he did. Okay? And then you overcome the devil by your testimony because he did something for you. So I'm going to leave you alone. God is good. And whoever is listening to this broadcast I guarantee you, you do those, you follow those simple instructions. You witness about who did something for you. And then you help them. Maybe put a little money, put a little food in their belly, put a little money on. Show a little hospitality in your home. These big homes that nobody wants to bring people over. Little things. Same here. I ain't telling you something that I don't know. Just tell somebody, hey, I, I love you. Or, you know, I like you. And then let's see what happens. God is good. Understand the test. Pass. I tell a friend of mine, pass the test. Pass the test, please. Because you ain't going forward until you pass the test. I don't care if it takes years. You might die not even passing the test, but that's okay. And then you go on to glory. God ain't losing nobody. You reject him. He don't reject you. He already did what he had to do with Christ on the cross. That's it. He ain't giving you no more. I tell people, he can't give you no more than what he gave you. What you mean, brother? What you mean, elder? What you mean, digging? What you mean, bishop? What you mean? He gave you what he created. He said, in the beginning, God and the spirit moved. He gave you that spirit who moved in there and there was light. It's in you. He can't give you any more. So he said, he's convicting you. He's your helper. He can't give you no more than that. I know we think he can. I think he think he can give you houses and cars. No, he put the spirit in you so that you can use his wisdom to get the houses and cars. He's not dropping manna from heaven. He's the manna is in you now. Now, so I, I'll leave you on that note and let you chew on it. It's in you. It's not like David. I cried to the Lord and He heard me and He delivered me out of all my fears. See, David didn't know who the Lord was. We know the Lord is Jesus, and He's you already delivered. You already redeemed. You already saved. It don't take no person to tell you that. You need to be reminded, but you already. Now, walk into it. That's the religion. The religious piece have to leave, and the practical piece have to go forward. He's in you. No more. No more. Many afflictions of the righteous, but he delivers them out of them all. 
He said, meditate. Now put it back into that peace. Many afflictions are of the righteous. Many religions, many afflictions of the righteous. But you have been delivered out of them all. That's called a cross. He said, it's finished. So understand when you read that Old Testament, understand not, they didn't know Jesus. They didn't know he was the law. They didn't know he was all these things. They didn't know. Jesus said, me and my father one. Make them one. Help them to understand who they are. Stop this nonsense. So when you read the Old Testament, like I'm reading, old, you read it, understand it. That you know it. That's what Paul was trying to say. You, 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 what, what are you doing? What are you doing? Religion will kill you. You are healed by a strike. You are healed. Okay? You are ready. It's not that you're going to get healed. You are healed. But because you don't believe it, you ain't healed. You understand? This body going to die as it lives. This flesh. You ain't flesh. You spirit. That has a soul. That's walking in the body. When you understand that, you, you grow up. Ain't got nothing to do. It's not what they do to you. It's what you do to them. That's why they can smack you and spit on you. And then you just keep moving. I leave that alone. I'm getting out of this place. God bless you. God keep you. God cause his face to shine on you. Until next week, I told you, I'm full. I'm full. I ain't, I ain't naturally, you can look at my weight. Natural and, 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 and spiritually, I'm full. And I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going I'm to keep saying it until you get it. In the beginning, God. And I'm going to leave you on that note. In the beginning, God. He said and it was. See you next week.